driving this tank is more than just a handful of a job, especially when it comes to curves on hills. But with brake, gear shift, clutch, steering laterals all to be operated, and all practically at the same time, this driver is busier than the proverbial one-armed paper hanger. Well, he finally makes it all right. But watch how easy it is with this tank, with the same driver. You can shift under full power and take that hill in stride without wishing he had another pair of hands. Why is this? It's the same driver. It must be because of this particular tank, which has planetary gears. They make all the difference in driving ease between this tank and the other one. Planetary gears give us the selection of gear ratios needed. Yet they stay constantly in mesh to achieve a smooth, quiet operation in the transmission. Let's look at this model of a single set of planetary gears and see how it works. First of all, let's clear up that word planetary. It comes from our solar system, which consists of the sun and the planets that revolve around it. This is the sun gear. And like the other basic components, it has an axis on which it can revolve. Designed to revolve around the sun gear, like planets, are these planet pinions. Surrounding and meshing with the planet pinions is this ring gear. Unlike the other parts we've seen, the ring gear's teeth are in its inner circumference. In order to transmit power to and from the planet pinions, there is a planet carrier which connects to them. Together, planet carrier and pinions make up the third basic component or member of the planetary gear set. In addition to revolving on their own axes, the planet pinions rotate with the planet carrier each of these members can fit into the powertrain in different ways to do different jobs. For instance, attaching any of these gears to the input shaft makes it the input member. Here, the input is the sun gear. And here, the input member is the ring gear. In like manner, the planet carrier can serve as input. In this position, members receive power directly from the engine. The second way these parts can be used is as output. The sun gear can serve in this capacity by attaching it to the output shaft. So can the ring gear by rigging it up the same way. or the planet carrier. In this output position, these members transmit power directly to the drive wheels. In addition, each of these parts can be held motionless by a band. They are then called reactionary members. Here's the sun gear as the reactionary. The ring gear as the reactionary. And finally, the planet carrier, with the band holding it reactionary. There's another way to get work from these parts. And that's by locking two of them together by means of a clutch. This clutch disc is attached to the sun gear shaft, and therefore turns with the sun gear. The disc can also be moved along the shaft. 
Because the ring gear is free to turn independently of the sun gear shaft, another clutch disc is fastened securely to the back of the ring gear. Assembled, the two discs face each other. When the movable disc on the sun gear is forced against the disc on the ring gear, this friction connection locks these two members together. Keeping in mind how these three gear members can fit into the powertrain, let's see what different results or drives we can get. There are five in all, neutral, gear reduction, overdrive, reverse, and direct drive. For each of these results, a rule of thumb or law can be laid down. Take neutral, for instance. When there is an input and an output, but no reactionary, the result is neutral. To illustrate this first law, we have the sun gear connected to the engine to serve as the input. We can see this connection by stripping down to the input shaft and the sun gear. Now, as the engine rotates the input shaft, the sun gear rotates also. This causes the planet pinions to revolve on their axes. They in turn cause the ring gear to revolve, since there is nothing to stop it, no reactionary. Thus, the pinions are really idling, with no power transferred to the carrier, and consequently none to the output shaft, which doesn't turn. This is the same effect as neutral position in any transmission, which is fine as far as it goes. But if we want those wheels to turn, we've got to transmit power to them. Controlling one of the members with a band to make it reactionary will do the trick. And that brings up law number two. When the planet carrier is the output and there is a reactionary, we get reduction. With the planet carrier as output and the ring gear reactionary in this case, let's follow the power flow. The sun gear receiving the input from the shaft sends it on to the planet pinions, causing them to turn on their own axes. But since the ring gear is held reactionary, the planet pinions can't move it, so they're forced to walk around inside the ring gear. In doing so, they turn the planet carrier, which revolves the output shaft to transmit power to the drive wheels. This is the same as low range in a vehicle. Back on the model, by comparing the speeds of the two markers, we can see that the output is turning more slowly than the input. This is gear reduction. When the input member is smaller than the output member, we find that we get a certain amount of gear reduction. For one revolution of the input member, the planet carrier covers only a part of the inner circumference of the ring gear. By following these lines, we can see that the sun gear makes one full revolution, while the planet carrier travels only one-third of the way around, reducing the output speed to one-third of the input speed. In addition, gear reduction can be varied. When the input member is larger than the output member, the amount of gear reduction is not so great. To see the difference, let's use those lines again. One revolution of the input, which is the ring gear in this case, will drive the output two-thirds of the way around, giving us a ratio of one to two-thirds reduction. This is actually one-half the gear reduction that we got the other way. So we must remember that the relative size of the input and output members is what determines the amount of reduction. Now for the opposite of reduction, which is overdrive. There's a law for that, too. When the planet carrier is the input and there is a reactionary, we get overdrive. 
In this setup, the sun gear is the reactionary member. And the ring gear takes care of the output. Now let's study the power flow. It comes in on the planet carrier. With the band holding the sun gear reactionary, the rotation of the planet carrier forces the pinions around this reactionary member. The combined rotation of the planet carrier and the revolution of the pinions drive the ring gear at an increased rate of speed and give us overdrive. In addition, vehicles with planetary gears can get variations in overdrive by the respective sizes of the input and output members. Back on the model again, we see that the larger member, the ring gear, as output, gives us a certain amount of overdrive. We can determine this amount by using the lines again. Each complete revolution of the input planet carrier causes the ring gear to revolve one and a half times. This gives us an overdrive ratio of one to one and a half. However, this is less overdrive than we'll get in the example coming up. With the input, still the planet carrier, of course, and the sun gear, the smaller member, the output. Let's see the increased overdrive we get with this setup. Again, the power comes in on the planet carrier. The band is applied to make the ring gear reactionary. Rotation of the planet carrier forces the planet pinions to travel around the ring gear. With a greater distance to cover, they travel faster than before and thus drive the sun gear at an increased rate of speed. The result, greater overdrive. Let's see just how much more overdrive we get with the smaller member as the output. These lines will show that we get twice as much overdrive as we got with the ring gear as output. One revolution of the planet carrier drives the sun gear around three times. This gives us an overdrive ratio of three to one. So we see that the relative size of the input and output members determines the degree of overdrive also. Now to go on to law number four. When the planet carrier is the reactionary, the result is reverse. In keeping with this law, the band is applied to hold the planet carrier reactionary. The flow of power goes this way. It comes in on the sun gear, causing the planet pinions to revolve on their axes. They draw the ring gear in a direction opposite to the sun gear. Here we can see the reversal of direction. The input drives the sun gear in a counterclockwise direction, causing the planet pinions to turn clockwise. The planet pinions will force the ring gear, the output member, to turn clockwise also. Thus transmitting reverse of direction to the output shaft, giving us reverse. There's one more law to come, the fifth. When two members are locked together, we get direct drive. We use a clutch to lock the sun and ring gear together so that they now move around like one unit. The planet pinions trapped between the sun and ring gears are dragged around as if in a vise, but none of them can rotate on its own axis. So actually all three members revolve as a unit 
and the output shaft turns at the same speed as the input shaft, giving us direct drive. With direct drive, we complete the cycle of drives required of a vehicle. Let's review these drives and the laws on which they are based. First, there's neutral, governed by law number one. When there is an input and an output, but no reactionary, the result is neutral. Next is law number two. When the planet carrier is the output and there is a reactionary, we get gear reduction, which sets our vehicle in motion. After this comes law number three. When the planet carrier is the input, the result is overdrive. Then, law number four. When the planet carrier is the reactionary, we go into reverse. And finally, law number five. When any two members are locked together, the result will be direct drive. Even though the range of single planetary gear sets can be expanded in various ways, these five laws will always apply. So remember them.